Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to Walking Through the Book of Matthew. I'm your host, Ruel Barksdale, and today we will be in the 13th chapter of the book of Matthew. So get your Bible, paper, pencil, wherever you keep the Word of God, and join us as we walk through the book of Matthew. Now, to, to, to entitle our lesson for tonight, it would simply be, keep planting, harvest will come. Keep planting, harvest will come. Now, you will recall last week, um, we looked at the first 23 verses in the book of the 13th chapter uh, of Matthew, the chapter 13. Uh, and in that 13th chapter, uh, Christ starts to give parables. And he gave the parable of the good seed. Um, and we said that a parable is an earthly illustration of a heavenly truth. An earthly illustration of a heavenly truth. And he's giving parables because he is teaching. Now, primarily in the 13th chapter, he's teaching his disciples. And he's teaching them because he is creating a succession plan. Unfortunately, so many times in our in our modern day corporations and even churches, we don't we don't train the next generation to succeed. And so when the president, when the pastor, when when the senior director is off the scene, now we're searching for somebody to follow up. But Christ is giving us a model here. If you train those that are coming after you, when you are off the scene, they will be able to keep the ball and, and run on to see what the end is going to be. And so he's giving parables and then he is purposefully telling his disciples, now look, this is what this means. So we're, we're talking about the word parables again in, in this chapter. Uh, we, we end it with verse 23. We'll start with verse 24. But I also want to talk a little bit about harvest time before we get into the 13th chapter, verse 24 through 44, I believe. Harvest is a time of reaping what you have sown. Now, the sowing is the hard work. It's, it's putting the plants in the ground. It's clearing the field. It's, it's making sure that, that the field is prepared. And, and, and so in reaping, you have a chance to celebrate and to take advantage of all the work that was done in the season of sowing. Now, when you sow, my brothers and sisters, it is not your job to bring the increase. That's God's job. And I know, I know, I know, sometimes we get frustrated because we try to reach people. We try to reach our children. We try to reach our sons and our daughters and our husbands and our wives and our, and our family members and our coworkers because we have a love for them and we want them to know the beauty of Christ. And it seems like we reap and we reap and we reap and, and we, uh, I'd rather we sow, we sow and we sow and we don't reap. But you and I have to believe that if God has given you a ministry, our job is to sow. His job is to bring in the harvest. Harvest time will come because the harvest is plentiful. But the laborers, my brother, my sister, you and I are laborers. And our job is to plant. Our job is to trust God to bring in harvest time. And, and so we also, uh, in, in this chapter, we'll look at the difference between wheat and tares or wheat and, and thorns. And, and sometimes in the 21st century, it seems like we're so confused. Why, God, are you allowing this person to do what they do? And why have you, have you allowed this person to come to power? And why, God, in the church and in our communities and, and in our corporations, you've got good people next to bad people. And sometimes it seems like it's hard to distinguish. Lord, why don't you just allow us to separate? There's, there is a harvest time coming. And in this chapter, Christ will deal with the wheat and the tares seemingly growing up together. But you and I must believe, do not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, we shall reap a harvest 
of blessings. All right, so let's go to the 13th chapter, and we will start with verse 24, the 13th chapter of Matthew. And it reads this way. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, now let's break that down a little bit. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed. The man who sowed good seed is Christ. The man who sowed good seed is God. The field is the world. But while everyone was sleeping, now we know he never sleeps or slumbers. Who's, that's you and I sleeping, my brothers and sisters. I, I, and so I know it is conventional wisdom to say, don't be woke, but you better be awake. God wants you to be awake. Because when you're not awake, that's when evil men can come and sow discord, can sow disharmony, can sow all kinds of confusion in the corporations, in the community, in the church. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, 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 he answered. Because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let them both grow until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them into bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring them into my barn. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Now, you and I have often heard it said we should have faith uh, of a grain of a mustard seed that we can remove mountains. And, and the idea is a, a grain of mustard seed is so small, so tiny, so minuscule, so insignificant. And yet it is able to produce great things. My brothers and sisters, the beginning of the ministry of Christ was so small, so tiny, so insignificant. And with 12 men who he would do succession planning with, the world would be forever changed. And so what should we learn from that? Christ has given you a ministry. He's given you a, a, a job to do on earth. And sometimes you might get tired, you might get frustrated because you can't see the, the harvest of your labor. I recently have come to the conclusion that there are things that I would want for my country that I will never see while I'm alive. Does that mean I stop working? No. Does that mean I throw up my hands? No. That means I raise up my sleeves. Does that mean that, that God won't do what God will do? No, that doesn't mean that at all. My brother and my sister, do not get weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, and we shall reap a harvest of blessing if we faint not. We have to keep doing what we're doing. We have to keep, keep doing what God has called us to do. We have to keep being what God has called us to be. And sometimes while we're working, there will be false prophets. There will be false teachers. There will be people saying all kinds of things. And the people in general won't be able to tell the difference between who's the false prophet and, and who's the real prophet and who's, who's of God and who's of Satan. The tree is known by the fruit it bears. And in due season, the harvester will separate the wheat from the tares. The servants asked him, do, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them into bundles to be burned and gather the wheat and bring it to my barn. 
He then told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. Jesus spoke all these parables to the crowds. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the beginning, since the creation of the world. And then here comes the succession planning. And then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. Lord, what, what, what does that mean? What, what is the lesson behind that? What, what, what should we learn? He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The son of man will send out his angels. And they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, he who has a desire to learn, he who has a desire to follow me, he who has the faith that I am who I say I am. He who has ears, let him hear. My brother, my sister, sometimes I know we get tired. We get frustrated because we don't see the fruit of our labor. And sometimes we see other people that seem to not have good intentions, seem to be false prophets, and they're growing up and, and they're speaking and they're, they're profit, profiting and they're, they're prospering right next to us. There is a harvest time. And your job, my job, your, your responsibility, responding to your ability, and my responsibility is to keep planning, to do what God has called us to do, and trust that in harvest time, he will separate the wheat from the tares. And so, my brothers, my sisters, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season, ye shall reap if you faint not. This is Ruel Barkdale. We will keep walking through the book of Matthew, 13th chapter next week. And we will talk about the parable of the hidden treasure and the pearl, the parable of the net, and a prophet without honor. And so until next week, tell a friend, tell an enemy about our walk through the book of Matthew. And maybe by the time next week is over, <laughs> you and your enemy will be friends. I love you, but God loves you more. See you next week. Bye-bye.